I'd like to uh, open a meeting of the Whiteley Select Board of April 26, 2021. And this is uh, our, our meeting on, on this date is, is special to coincide with the, the incorporation of, of the town of Whiteley in on the same day of April 26 in 1771. So we're celebrating the 250th anniversary of the incorporation of the of the town. Uh, I was asked not to not to give too much data or too much comparisons of what we did in the past, but where the town is 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 operating in similar fashion as we have for the last hundred years, uh, well, 250 years. What I could find, let me just say briefly, uh, and I'm not going to go into a lot of a lot of detail. I've got a 2000, uh, 1920 copy of the town report that was 150. That was 100 years ago. It talks about a celebration, and then in 1971 we also had our 200th celebration. Uh, and both of these coincide with with the uh, with the town hall, the development and, and rehabilitation of, of the town hall. Uh, as you remember, 50 years ago we had a major. There was a major uh, remodeling of the town hall, uh, and as as there was two or three years ago, with the intent of this being our showcase for for future town activities and especially the 250th celebration. Uh, the town hall is, is also 150 years old on this date. Uh, the two story portion is 150 years old and it seems every 50 years it's been updated. And what, what we wanted to do, or at least I wanted to do with, the, with this celebration is to commemorate some of the the history of the town's, town's buildings, the oldest buildings that we have, which is the, the town hall, the S.Y. Dickinson Library, and our center school. Uh, we had pictures of these on, the, on our float that was, it was for, for the parade. Uh, it started by having just pictures, and we had a group of volunteers get together that decided that we wanted a model of the town hall on a float. Uh, I guess I would like to express thanks before we get going here to Wayne Hukoski was the one that really uh, controlled the development of that development and the building of that and of the float it, during the last several weeks. There was a group of volunteers of about six or eight people that, that helped over time to, to develop that, that float. Uh, so we wanted to, to do that to, to commemorate some of our, our buildings uh, and also to make it a place for our 250th activities, which will be occurring from this date on. Okay. Uh, other changes just briefly that we're gonna be seeing in the next year is of course the Veterans Memorial, it's gonna be updated. Uh, also the library handicapped accessibility is gonna be improved. These will probably be really visible to, to many people. Uh, not as visible, but still undergoing is a water merger with a department and a district and a center school reuse project in the center of town that affect these buildings. So uh, leaving it at that with my, uh, Introductory comments. I think we, the next order of business would be to uh, a citation, Brian, that we got from the governor's office. We didn't receive the actual citation. I guess it's it's still in the mail. Uh, we got a copy of what was on the citation, and I'll just read that briefly. It says, "Town of Whateley." Then on behalf of the citizens of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I am pleased to confer upon the town of Whateley this governor's citation in recognition of your 250th anniversary, this 26th day of April in the year 2021, signed by 
Governor Charles D. Baker and Lieutenant Governor Karen Polito. So we should be getting the uh, printed version of that soon. And this, this is uh, corresponds, I think the only time that I could see in the past hundred years that we had a select board meeting on this date, an incorporation date. Uh, so I think that to me, that's significant that, that we are on this date ha having a meeting. And what I've developed also is, uh, I guess, a citation for the town of Whateley. Brian, can you put that up briefly? I think this kind of commemorates this day in, in history for us. And, and so people can look and see that we did have a meeting on this date and we did do something. Uh, this will be part of the permanent record of, of our, our 250th celebration. Basically, it's town of Whateley. 250th anniversary with the, steel, the town seal. And it says, we are proud to serve Whaley in her great Sester Centennial as select board members. And then the three of us will sign, Frederick Orlowski, Jonathan Edwards, and Joyce Palmer Fortune. So, uh, okay. Uh, next on the agenda, I guess I'd like to ask, uh, our representative, uh, Ms. Nat Natalie Blaze, to uh, say a few comments, and uh, I think she has, if she has something she wants to read, uh, she can do that now. Thanks, Fred. I appreciate it. It's good to be here with my good colleague, Senator Joe Comerford. Joe, it's nice to see your face. It's nice to see all of your faces, and I'm sorry that we can't be together in person. Uh, I'm looking forward to the celebrations next year and look forward to, to being all to being together with you. Um, the mail just delivered this certificate from the house on Friday. It was a little bit under the wire. Uh, as a result of not having a printer here big enough in my house, you get a hand lettered <laughs> certificate from me. We'll see how we'll see how well I did. Uh, but this is a, a certificate from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, be it hereby known to all that the Massachusetts House of Representatives offers its sincerest congratulations to the town of Waitley in recognition of your 250th anniversary. The entire membership extends its very best wishes and expresses the hope for your future good fortune and continued success in all endeavors. Given this 26th day of April, 2021, this is signed by Speaker of the House, Ron Mariano, and by myself. Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We'll get much. this to you, Brian. I'll bring this over to you at some point in time with a nice frame too. Congratulations. Okay, thank you again. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, moving on, uh, Senator Joe Comerford uh, would like to say something. Absolutely. Um, so first, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I love serving Waitley, love the partnership with Rep. Lay. Really grateful for your service, um, all of you who are serving the town. Uh, Brian, I believe the Senate citation arrived. Is that is that so? I don't know whether you want to hold it up, um, but I, I can give it a little read. Um, be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to the town of Waitley in recognition of the 250th anniversary of the founding of the town of Waitley and in honor of its rich history, natural beauty, quality of life and active and involved citizens. Be it further known that the Massachusetts Senate extends its best wishes for continued success. Um, and then it, it goes on to a closing uh, signed by the Senate president and the clerk and me. So I'm, I'm honored to have sent it along. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is the, uh, as you all know, we had a, a motor parade uh, on Saturday the 24th. It was filmed by, by FCAT and I just looked a while ago, there's like over 600 people that have looked at it on FCAT, which is quite a few. Uh, and I guess rather than, than you can look at the whole video. Anybody can look at the video on FCAT channel. It's about nine minutes long. Uh, and we'll post it on our website, the address to look, 
look uh, look at it. And this time, I'm going to ask John Adam if, if he wanted to say anything about the parade, how it went. And thank you, Fred. I would uh, I'd just like to take a second to thank the officers and members of the fire department and the police department that gave numerous hours uh, for planning and making this happen and getting it done. Uh, I, I just, especially like there's a few people that I have that I lean on all the time to get the job done, no matter what the task is, they're excellent at their job. And I would hope that this goes down in a history book as a job well done by the fire department and the police department. That's about it. Okay, I would add my personal comment. Congratulations on to you, John, for a job well done. And I think everybody in town appreciated it. I've received uh, many positive comments back. Uh, even on, there's even sites on, on Facebook. Uh, I guess that I'm friends with people on Facebook have, have sent to me comments, numerous comments of how good it was uh, and how it was good to get something away from the uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, dilemma, I guess, that we're in uh, to do something different for the town. So people appreciate it from that point of view as well. No matter how long it was, maybe he should, maybe he should just have a cushion next time. <laughs> well, it wasn't too bad for us. We could stand up, so. Okay, uh, next agenda we have, uh, I've asked Susan Barron, who's uh, chair, I guess, of the, of the 250th Celebration Committee to uh, Tell us what we think we can expect to see in the next year for activities. Susan. Thank, thank you, Fred. Uh, Brian, if you could enable screen share. Is it gonna let me project? There we go. Can everybody see the screen? Yes. <clears throat> so the 250th committee has been working for actually a few years and we had all sorts of really exciting plans for this spring and summer, which obviously had to be amended, um, but we did want to honor the date. So the, the parade that um, Fred and John were just talking about was a huge success. We had over 60 vehicles participating in it. It went throughout town where people were lined up you know, on beach chairs in their front yards and on the side of the road sitting, uh, watching this. And it wasn't just people from Waitley. I happened to randomly talk to people who were sitting in, in my general area. And there were people from Northampton, people from Greenfield, uh, a family that was visiting from out of town from Virginia. It was a spectacular event. And I wanted to personally thank John and um, his crew for pulling off a phenomenal event and to thank the residents and viewers um, who viewed it and everyone who participated in it. It was more spectacular than I ever could have hoped for. That said, we still want to celebrate the way we had wanted to celebrate. So we have, we are planning the major celebration for the week of June 18th through 26th of 2022. So a bit over a year from now, and this is just a sampling of the events that are in the works and there will be other events as well. But we really feel the town and the people of the town deserve and will be ready for a blowout celebration next year. <clears throat> In the meantime, we have this traveling light show that uh, Allison Bell and Melissa Caldwell created working with Keith that residents can sponsor at their home for two weeks to a month, depending on how many people we have signing up. And it just you know, plugs into house current but they, it's a traveling show that we have that people all throughout the town can enjoy it. And if people who are viewing this meeting are interested, there's a sign up sheet at the address at the bottom of the screen. 
Finally, you can follow the plans in a number of ways. We have a Facebook page, an Instagram page. We have our own website at waitley250.com. We also have a waitley250 page at uh, waitley.org. All of these will be showing what is what will be going on for the festivities. On the Facebook and Instagram, we're also honoring the town and the history of 1771, not just in Waitley, by having a throwback, throwback Thursday post, thanks to Ashley, who uh, finds historical events from them and then and puts them up. For example, who knew that Beethoven was one year old when the war founded? Um, there were you know, a, lo a lot of interesting, interesting facts. And then finally, if people are interested in helping put together these events, we would love to have you join our little Mary crew. And you can email us at waitley250 at gmail.com. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Susan. Uh, now I'd like to make a few closing comments for myself and then Turn it over to if Jonathan and Joyce and Brian have anything to say before we, we move on. I guess for the, the people watching, and I think all of us know here that uh, we're gonna have a celebration next year. And I guess I would encourage people to come help celebrate, help the town celebrate our 250th birthday this year. We need you to help us celebrate. It can't be just town officials and committees doing it. We need people from the town. And I think uh, one statement I like to make is, is that this is our town and, and let's show everyone what it's about and how we as residents and volunteers and of town officials will continue to cooperatively make Waitley as a unique and prosperous place to live. In closing, thank you all for your support for making Whaley such a great community. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, did you have anything you want to say? Well, I just, I, not a lot. I, I want to thank, very much thank everyone who's been involved. Um, you know, huge kudos to Wayne Hitkowski for putting the, the float together. Um, for those of you who haven't seen it, he did a remarkable job. Um, with a with a recreation of, of town hall um, and and the birthday cake and the birthday candles it it it, uh, it was it was really he did a really nice job and and he should get a lot of credit for that um, police and fire did a great job um, and the turnout was wonderful so looking forward to the next year uh, where we can start to safely get out from from under the COVID umbrella. Um, emphasis on safely and, and with patience. Um, and thanks and, and, and thanks for the proclamations. And, and uh, the one person we should have had up there was, was Brian Domina because he's been tremendous for over the past few years. And um, we were able to pull off that because he keeps the town running. So thanks to Brian as well. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Joyce. I just want to add my thanks to um, to everyone. Myself, I um, I got to ride on an awesome float, and I didn't actually have to do anything to build it or make it happen. And um, I know uh, I have uh, Fred and John, uh, Hannah and Wayne Hutkowski and all like the builders and like all these people who came out of the woodwork to make it all happen. And I just want to give my personal appreciation for that. Uh, and I appreciate the time our, our state rep and senator have made to be here at this special moment for us. Hey, hey, Fred, let me just also, you know, thanks should really go to Sue Barron as well. She's working awfully hard on all of this. Um, and thank you. Know. But can I give a shout out to my co-chair, Keith? Absolutely. I was I just wanted to give a shout out to you, Sue, because a big Zoom hug. and You're doing great. OK, Brian. Um, <clears throat> I thought that parade was great. I'm one of the out-of-towners who came in for the parade. Um, I took my three kids, and, and they thought it was a great time, and they wanted to come back for the next one. I don't know when that's going to be, but 
Uh, I think everybody did a, did a really great job. Um, and I honestly think that, that the town has a lot of bright years ahead. I know we're celebrating the 250th, but I think the town is in a, in a pretty good position to, to have a lot of success into the future. So um, hopefully we'll be around to see 300, but we'll see. Okay, thank you. And I would just add, uh, I guess I didn't go into much detail on, on the float, but if people that missed the select board float, it's still gonna be around. It'll be available for our celebration next June. And the intent is to keep it somewhere for future parades in neighboring towns. So uh, if you missed it, there's still gonna be an opportunity to, to see it. It's, it's on the video from FCAT. I know it went by fast, so people couldn't really see all the detail, but there was a replica of the town hall on it, the old town hall uh, with the three chimneys, the, the back addition that was, that was with the uh, original building and, uh, and also it had 250 candles on it. So uh, if you're anxious to see it, see it in the future parades, so. Okay, does anybody else uh, have anything they want to comment on the celebration before we move on to our- Yeah, Fred, I've got one comment, comment, and that is that I hope to have still pictures of all the floats up on the Waitley 250 website and possibly other, I don't know, Facebook, I don't know where else. So you'll be able to see any vehicles or floats that were in the parade, hopefully very soon up on our website. Okay, thank you, Fred. Okay, and again, thanks to uh, our representatives and senators, Natalie and Joe, and I'm sure we'll see you again, uh, uh, whatever, so, and anybody else? Uh, okay, Rebecca and Susan and Keith, okay, and Fran. Okay, moving on, uh, meeting minutes. Uh, review and approve the meeting minutes of our April 14th, 2021 meeting. Uh, I move that we uh, approve the meeting minutes as written. Second. Okay, one minor comment. Uh, the dates for the early voting aren't correct in there. You may want to check them. Check it. It's, it doesn't start in June and goes to April or something. It's the backwards. So uh, that's the only comment I have on the minute. Want to watch this meeting? No. Okay, uh, motion to approve. Okay, we have motion to approve. Okay, roll call vote, Jonathan. Uh, with the correction from you, Fred, uh, aye. Joyce? Aye. Uh, Fred, yes. Okay. Moving on, vendor and payroll warrants. I know, did we see them, Brian? Okay. Yeah, they were sent as separate attachments to the meeting separate material. Attachment. Okay. okay. Uh, any comments on them? No. Okay. Uh, public comments. Anybody from the public have uh, comments on anything that's not on our agenda for this evening? <laughs> no. Okay. Scheduled appointments. We're almost on time. Uh, first one is from uh, Jared Glanz Verger to discuss a proposed host community agreement for marijuana production, marijuana product manufacturing facility to be located at Three River Road. Okay, uh, Jared. Uh, yep. Hi, guys. Uh, so we are uh, also the group that's um, doing a cultivation operation on Seven River Road. Um, and we're hoping to keep more of our production and operations in Waitley. Um, we've had, uh, we think, a great relationship with the town to date and look forward to bringing uh, more of the work that we do here. Here. Uh, um, the Three River Road location is adjacent to our Seven River, River Road. Road. Cultivation. Cultivate. Oops, looking like there's some feedback here. Can not sure if everybody can hear that, but um, the Three River Road property is adjacent uh, on a separate parcel, um, and we're hoping to uh, clean it up. Um, it's currently used as a small motor repair shop, 
um, with um, boats and other machinery that's kept outside. Um, and our hope is to clean up the site, um, improve its, its look and feel from the street, um, and to make it a modern uh, manufacturing facility. Okay. And, uh, right, I'll, I'll, I'd, I'd like to just say a couple of things. Um, okay. So Joyce and I um, met with or talked with Jared um, last week and we, we discussed the terms of the HCA. Um, and we had a good discussion and, and the board has in the packet the uh, proposed HCA that, that Joyce and I, I guess, Joyce and I are recommending that the board sign. Um, it's essentially the same terms we did um, change the language as it relates to how the community impact fee, uh, really what's eligible for the community impact fee to better reflect what the statute uh, allows, which is um, really costs related to sale of marijuana or marijuana products um, as the legislation defines that as a 0.3% uh, THC content or higher, I believe, um, because it's possible what we learned from Jared is that they may be doing other manufacturing, such as maybe Jared, correct me if I'm wrong, like CDBD and other other products that that come from the plant. I'm not, I don't really know this very well, but um, those, you know, the sale of those products aren't necessarily within that, within what the statute intended for the community impact fee. So that's why there's the, the proposed language change in that paragraph. And I'll, I'll show that. If you guys want to see it, yeah, please. So we might assemble soft goods uh, there um, and may use the same machinery that we use for uh, THC extraction for CBD extraction. And so our, our hope was just to make sure that uh, the 3% um, community impact fee, which we are happy to pay on you know, THC products that are regulated by the bylaw um, doesn't impact sale of, you know, sweatshirts and hats and, and CBD products that are outside of the statute. Seems reasonable. Okay. So Brian, we need to act to uh, approve this host community agreement. Yeah, that's what that's being requested tonight is that the board vote to approve this. I, I would make a motion that we uh, vote to uh, accept this host community agreement as written. Yeah, I would second that. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, roll, roll call vote, Jonathan? Yep. Joyce? Aye. Fred, yes. Okay, next item is, okay, Jared also talking about a, holding a virtual community outreach meeting, a proposed marijuana retail establishment at 424 State Road. Yes. Um, so, so in the interest of, uh, again, keeping our operations in town, um, we've identified a location for a retail uh, marijuana dis dispensary, which we intend to be both adult use and medical. Um, it's located at 424 State Road. Uh, we understand that uh, a neighbor is also intending to use it for a similar purpose. Um, we welcome that. Um, we are uh, currently in, um, we're, we have an accepted offer on the property. We intend to purchase it um, either ourselves or with a related party. Um, and, uh, and we look forward to, um, to citing, um, a dispensary there, um, because of the situation with COVID-19, uh, the triple C has allowed the virtual, uh, community outreach meeting option, which we've used for seven river road and for three river road. Um, and we would hope to, uh, to use for this as well. And we would look forward to hearing comments from the community, uh, about our proposed, uh, 424 state road. Uh, dispensary. Okay, do you have a date you're having that meeting on? We do not yet. We've submitted um, a request to uh, the newspaper. Uh, John Hanmer 
uh, or Sam Hanmer may be on and he may have updated information for that. Um, but we're, we're searching for a date and have um, submitted material to the newspaper. Yeah, <clears throat> this is John Hanmer. Um, I sent in a request to the newspaper for, I believe, May 17th at 7 p.m. That's when we would try to have it. Uh, we need to have uh, at least two weeks lead time in the newspaper for notice. Um, and so generally communications between newspaper and ourselves take a couple of days. So May 17th should give us approximately two weeks. And the concept would be vertical, in vertical integration. Is that accurate? That's accurate. Entirely within Waitley. Yes. And, and where would you be refining the product for sale? That's the Three River Road. That's Three River? That's right. That's exactly right. So we would have um, value added manufacturing at Three River Road at the uh, former CNA building. Uh, and we would have retail at 424 uh, State Road. Um, and this would keep um, a significant value, uh, you know, portion of the value uh, entirely within Waitley. Plus, you're going to be growing for it. both properties. Um, uh, sorry, I missed. I missed in trying to hear. Be, I mean, <clears throat> you're 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 essentially selling to yourself. Uh, we would be doing an intra-party transfer, correct? Right. So, how does that impact the three percent of 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 gross sales in terms of the host community agreement? So, it would be three percent on the highest value sale to a third party, whether that's to a customer at the retail or to a third party uh, retailer out of the whole, out of the uh, processor, out of the manufacturing facility, uh, Wheatley would enjoy 3% on the highest value sale to a third party. Right. So by definition, it's going to be, and I'm not saying this is good or bad. I'm just making sure that, that everyone's clear. It will be a lower gross intake by the town because you won't be getting three percent at the at the sale from point a to point b you will just be getting this the the highest value sale yeah. period can i take that one yeah i mean if they were in another town they could do an inter-party transfer and we would not see we would not get a bite of that apple right i i totally right. i'm not so, so, so this, uh, this is the way the law is written. We don't have any way to change right. that. We don't have anything to do. So there, there's not really a way to capture that in a host community agreement. Okay. I, I was just looking for clarity. That's all. Yeah. And, and the building in, in question, it's the same building as was discussed with another party. Is that accurate? I don't believe so. Uh, no, oh, 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 424. Yes. Yes. 424. Yes. Yeah. Not, not the, uh, right, 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 the right. retail. Yes. And so it is a condo. Um, there are three units there, I believe. Um, and we are uh, looking at the gray building. Uh, the other group, I believe it was Toro Verde, one, two, or three, or five. Uh, uh, that's in the red building. Okay. So your building is parallel to 116. 116. You got it. Right. Yes. So, are you also growing at seven, seven River Road? Yes, sir. We we are building out right now. We've broken ground okay. um, and we are moving as rapidly as we can to uh, be approved for final licensure um, at Seven River Road. And we hope to uh, produce income from the, for the town uh, this year. OK, you're not proposing to, pur to purchase the building, however, are you? Uh, we are. We are proposing to purchase. Right, so, you're, so it's a purchase of the building. And you are a for-profit entity, correct? Yes, sir. Yep. Okay. Um, it may not be, uh, well, I should say that when you say you, uh, I, I understood you to mean uh, our investors, an affiliate of ours, not the licensed entity necessarily. The building will be owned by a for-profit entity. That is correct. Right. For, for tax roll purposes, is my point. Yes, it, is, it will not be held by a, 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 okay. a not-for-profit. That's correct. Okay. And, and, and I can say we will, not seek, um, uh, we will not seek to avoid to pay real estate taxes through uh, not-for-profit status. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that clarity. 
Okay, so do we need to take any action, Brian, or just? Yeah, you need to you need to um, have a motion and a vote to approve the, the request for the virtual community outreach meeting. Okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? Okay, we'll call a vote, Jonathan. Yes. 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 Fred, yes. Okay. Moving on. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. And as a member of the Wheatley Historical Society, I, I congratulate you guys on the, on the two. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate your support. Thank you guys very much. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, COVID-19 state of emergency. Do we have anything new to discuss there? Nothing to take action on, no. I, right. I believe there's still one active case in town. Well, there's an active case in town. Okay. Fran, do you have anything you want to say? No? Okay. Ooh. Ooh. Moving on, all business, discuss and vote to submit an application for a complete streets grant program. Yeah, so I can I can speak on this one, Fred. Okay. Um, last week that we brought back the Complete Streets Committee that had been um, not meeting for a couple of years, um, and we talked about uh, applying for another Complete Streets grant. The first Complete Streets grant that that we received paid for the sidewalks that were put in front of um, I was going to say in front of John's house, but um, <laughs> um that's the plain road um from the uh from the church to the uh, center cemetery and from the um center school to the town hall um so we'll keep, we're looking uh to submit another application to the complete streets uh program that application will be due on um it says may 1st but i think it would actually be the that's a saturday um it'll be that friday and so the Complete Streets Committee met and they talked about um, what projects they would recommend that the select board submit for the grant. Um, and it really, if you remember, I, I sent out the prioritization plan. Let me bring that up. Um, the prioritization plan was, was the work, was the work product of the Complete Streets Committee uh, back in 2016, I believe. Um, and they prioritized projects that they would want the town to do. Um, so let me bring that up. Excuse me. Come on. So, this is the prioritization plan that was adopted in 2016, and this is what the committee reviewed. Um, and what I highlighted is is really what the committee suggests that this next grant uh, pursue. Um, and it's really it's really broken down into two uh, to two different areas. One is to finish Chestnut Plain Road. Uh, from the town hall um, to the church on the east side. I think it's the east side. The other part, that's the part of the road that's not finished. I think that's the east side. Um, then this, the second priority was um, from the committee 2016 was, was to complete the sidewalk from the existing sidewalk at the elementary school to Long Plain Road. Um, and make that a, a pathway for walkers and um, uh, kids who bike to be able to get out, get out of the driveway and get off the shoulder that is getting worn away. Mm -hmm. um, so the other ones really relate to those or, or include projects in those two areas. Um, and then the other ones that are not highlighted here are, are, are projects that the, that the committee identified, but um, for whatever reason, they're not recommending um, that we pursue those right now. 
Um, and some of those have, have different reasons. Some are because they've, they've been accomplished with other sources, um, with, with other funding sources, and, and uh, some are, they don't fit within the price range of the grant because um, they wanted to prioritize finishing Chestnut Plain Road. Um, so five is along Plain Road sign improvements. That's related to the, that's related to the school zone. Um, so there was some confusions about um, some of the numbering here, but nine really entails um, one. It's just that missing section there. Um, so there was some, there's, I think some overlap in the plan here. Um, the plan included some town center walk-in loop signs. Um, and those I think would uh, pertain to distance and wayfinding. Um, and then 21 is, is where the largest discussion happened with the committee. Um, this has not, let me, let me go back for one second. This has not, this was not part of the public review that happened when we originally looked at the sidewalk project. Um, so I would recommend that, that, that the, that the town solicit some public feedback. Um, if this, if this portion of the grant is awarded and, um, the committee talked about extending the sidewalk from the church down to the Waitley Center Woods project um, on the west side of the road, on the side that the church is on. I think that's the west side. Um, that would connect the Waitley Center Woods project with um, the sidewalks in the center of town. Would allow people who live along Chestnut Plain Road and who would park. Uh, one of the benefits, I think, of, uh, of doing this is that people could park at in front of the library or park at in front of the Waitley Inn or park at the town hall and then and then walk down to the, the Waitley Center Woods. Um, I don't remember who on the committee brought it up, but I think the parking area at the Waitley Center Woods is going to be uh, fairly small. So it would also um, help with that. So really the, the committee's recommending the committee's recommendation is that is really those two to focus on those two projects. Um, finishing Chestnut Plain Road and then doing those improvements outside of the school. Um, we did have help from, and are getting help from, from the FERCOC transportation planners, which is which is helpful to us. Um, Lori Scarborough and uh, uh, Beth Giannini have helped us out with this project and continue to help us. So um, I guess I could try to answer questions. What's the total amount of funding? Okay asking for um so i they are redoing the estimates fred and i haven't seen those yet i believe it's capped at 250 so i think we're going to get it as close to that as we can 250,000. and and that doesn't seem to be enough to cover all these you got highlighted in, in yellow though does it um well some of these overlap i guess that's the thing all right um um, but there, those are the the two areas that the that the committee had recommended, and I th I think um, once we see those cost estimates from Lori and Beth, then we'll know. But I, I think a lot of these overlap, okay. and in a lot of you know portions of these have been done, like number nine portion, a portion of that has been done. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> that whole disaster of an area at the intersection of North Street, Chestnut Plain, uh, Christian Lane, et cetera, obviously that's a big price tag. And I saw that um, <clears throat> there would be TIP funding needed. Is that why that did not make the cut? Because it just requires TIP involvement? Oh, this one right here. Um, yeah, it's not something we could... Yeah, it's not something we could pay with this grant. Um, but my understanding is that it would be a, a, a TIP eligible project because of the, the roadway classification. Okay, because that th that whole area is a, is a <clears throat> it's dicey. Mm -hmm. I, I would, and I would love to, if we could figure out a way to do 20. Um, I, I think it would be great if we could connect sidewalks to places people want to go. Um, and get them, get them out of their cars. And pe people people seem to want to park and walk to places if they have places to walk to. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's something that that we should try to encourage with our infrastructure, which is really the, the whole point of the complete streets program. Yeah. Okay, so you're asking for the board to uh, approve your plan here that you're going to be submitting? Um, so, so I don't have the, the actual grant application from Lori and, and Beth yet. Um, the committee tasked uh, Keith and I with, with um, massaging whatever needs to be done to, you know, to address these and focus on these two areas. Um, so yeah, it would be the board voting to submit the complete streets grant application for uh, the understanding would be that it would be for both of these areas. Okay, and once that motion to 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 accept these, I would second that. Okay, and once that's all finalized, will three of us have to come and sign? Um, no, I believe it's an online application. Oh, online. So I think I think um, if you want to, if you could authorize me to submit it, I think that would be great. And I can send you copies when when we get the when we get the 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 application from Beth and Beth and Lori. Mm. Do we have to vote on that separately? I I don't think so. Okay. So the motion is to approve these two locations with uh, an authority for Brian to sign and submit. Yeah, to submit the, to submit a complete streets grant application. Okay, uh, roll call vote, Jonathan? Yep. Joyce? Aye. Brad? Yes. Okay. Next item under new business is discuss whether to opt out of the mosquito control spraying program. Okay. Who do we have? Fran is going to talk about that? Yes. So, um, as you know, and thanks to Brian, we were informed that a uh, select board has to make a decision as to whether or not to opt out of the state's mosquito control spraying program, which, uh, by way of background, uh, was in a bill last year that the governor put forth with no opt out provisions. But thanks to our senator and reps, they were able to nudged out with an opt-out provision. Um, we, as a Board of Health, would like the town to opt out given um, we have no control over what the state does, either way actually, but because the state uh, typically comes in late with a spray, either aerial, aerial or truck spraying with some pretty toxic stuff, Anvil 1010, um, and recently a Boston Globe article said that it also included PFAS, lovely stuff. Anyway, the state can declare an elevated risk and then come in. Elevated, elevated risk is not defined. And if they were to come in and spray, it would be charged to the community. Even the local mosquito control district is resisting this along with many other communities and many communities wanna opt out. Problem is, we have uh, a very short timeline, as you know, May 15th, and it's the select board's decision in consultation with um, Boards of Health, a little one line in there. So um, we'd like, because there's better ways to do this, um, and the really only way to get uh, out of the state's program is to opt out with a alternative management plan, which I drafted a version of it's an application that you saw, hopefully you saw, right? Brian, did you pass it along? And we can put it up yeah. on the screen because the process is pretty prescribed. Um, you know, we would like the time and we actually, I actually requested and Joe Comerford put forth a request for an extension of two months on this deadline for applications. Uh, the state has said they will get back to us this week. So we don't know, it's pretty tight, obviously. And furthermore, they have not given clue one as to what they would accept as an alternative 
um, you know, management plan, which is required to opt out. So we put together the basic, a very basic one, one part of which is required, and that is public education, which we will, of course, do. And there's many materials out there. Uh, second part is um, basically prevention um, by cleaning out uh, culverts and ditches and making sure stuff is flowing. And did talk with Keith a little bit about this. I didn't want to put any extra um, you know, work on his plate, but um, because periodic, they periodically, the highway department cleans out um, culverts and ditches, et cetera. And we don't want to make the problem worse by digging out and creating, you know, more stagnant water. But Waitley, and we think we have very low risk. In fact, the state's triple E maps show that Waitley is a remote risk and for triple E and a very low risk for West Nile. There haven't been any cases in at least five years in town and many of the surrounding towns, by the way. Um, in the meantime, we do have a lot of intact wetlands, which includes mosquito predators. And these mosquito, these very mosquito predators would likely be killed along with the mosquitoes if spraying did take place. Um, so we have essentially an effective, the, probably the most effective mosquito control program by having intact wetlands as is. Um, so I wanna give time because the process is prescribed and we could put it up here if you want, Brian, which is part of the application. So you can see, maybe you don't need to, but it's your decision. You only have one more select board meeting before then it would have to be, um, open to public comment, obviously, and then you can decide this draft um, application to opt out is exactly that, a draft. We're still gathering information and maybe we will get an extension, but it's unclear at this point. So we've tried and we have not gotten any help from the state as to what they might require. Not just us, we're not alone in this. And all the Foothills towns are interested and many others, Beckett is opting out, um, Pittsfield and several other Western Mass communities have opted out of their uh, local mosquito control districts and wanna go with a, a more intelligent plan. So we'd like to do that too, whether we get it done this year or not, but we'd like to propose to you that we try going for an opt out. And I'll let uh, Becky chime in here because she is our medical person and uh, can explain some of the toxics about this. I suppose I could. Um, I, I kept <laughs> waiting for you to miss something so that I could chime in, but you kind of said it all. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the only other thing I would add is um, uh, the... Um, just that the the spraying will would kill one generation of mosquito, but very often there are probably all the time there are multiple generations of mosquito in any season, and so it only um, in theory kill one generation, and it induces resistance mm -hmm. at the same time, and so the next generation could be more resistant to the chemical. And I was just reading today that very often the spraying doesn't even kill mosquitoes, so they. Mm -hmm will spray and then find that they really haven't killed any mosquitoes with the chemical, but it is very toxic to, to um, aquatic life and also to bees. It's very, very toxic to bees. So it's um, mm -hmm. it just, it, it seems like a very reflexive thing to do so that the state can say it's doing something that's not very effective. And, you know, the real problems are things like climate change, which are increasing the, the, um, turnover rate of the virus in the mosquito. So that's mm -hmm. obviously a whole other issue, but, um, but the spring isn't really a great um, mm -hmm. response. So will this sp spring kills uh, uh, ticks and uh, other flying insects? No ticks. No ticks? Only pot potentially black, well, who knows? It, it covers a broad spectrum of insects, including good ones like dragonflies and damselflies, which are part of the main base of uh, the food web in uh, 
wetlands. We had a meeting with the Conservation Commission went over this. They are also uh, skeptical, to say the least, about the uh, mosquito control program that the state has. So, and Scott Jackson, who you all know, is you know an expert in um, amphibians, and I think they're called chironomids, which is this class of insects, including mosquitoes and dragonflies, etc. That would be severely affected by the spray. Again, we, you know, if it came down to uh, an outbreak, the state will jump in no matter what, no matter what town. But uh, if, but it's at that point, it's kind of too late. And we, there's other methods. There are other, there's there's mosquito fish. There's <laughs> there's other natural predators that could be introduced. And there's even larvicides that are not a little less toxic and more targeted. Um, so our thought is, you know, that we as a town go on a record and opt out whether they'll allow it or not with uh, basic public education and some preventive prevention steps that are in the draft application and um, hope that the state says, okay, that's enough because the education piece is the only, again, the only part that's sort of required and um, see what happens. And I doubt that there'll be any repercussions from this from, uh, for opting out at least now and maybe by next year or maybe even by next <laughs> month or two, we'll know more what the state actually would like to see in terms of uh, opt out plans. Okay, so, uh, so hmm? What have we been doing in the past? Is, uh, they've been spraying up until now? Yeah, not specifically in Waitley. Like I said, most of the, if you look at the maps, Fred, where Tripoli is around the state, it's largely concentrated in southeastern portion of the state. And that's where the state has been spraying mostly. They have had a couple of cases in the last two, three years. One case in Heath that we know of and another maybe in, uh, in Berkshire County someplace, but pretty rare. And um, some towns, because below, below the state's mosquito program, there's uh, regional mosquito control districts, one of which is in the Pioneer Valley. Um, and they have used mosquito uh, spray too on a couple of their communities in the last year or so. But I've talked with uh, one of the commissioners, Carol Ness, of that um, mosquito control district, and she too is um, very opposed to this. Uh, in fact, they would opt out <laughs> of the state's mosquito spraying program, at least. So, so Fran or, or Becky, I, I, I'm going to beg you guys to play devil's advocate for a second. Take mm-hmm. reverse opinion. Why, why wouldn't we opt out? Advocate for us not to opt out. <laughs> um, well, go ahead, Becky. Oh, um, wow, <laughs> that's tricky. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, well um, say, so they don't get mad at us. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, there, there have to be there have to be some some legitimate reasons why why the the policy is what it is. Well. I don't think it's a legitimate one. The assumption is that everywhere in the state will have this risk level, which is untrue. Mm-hmm. And uh, as it's been shown over the years, so there legitimately, if you said, well, we want to be ironclad, protected against Tripoli everywhere in the state um, and be ready to spray. I mean, that's the, I suppose the counter argument, even though by their own statistics, the effectiveness of their spraying has not been great. And I can show you from 2019, the chart of the state's effectiveness in uh, spraying in Bristol County, which is where um, Plymouth and and those uh, and the mosquito hotspots are. You know, Jonathan, I'm wondering if maybe one of the reasons they're doing this is because of climate change and because they know that yeah. the virus is going to be found more often. Um, right. And so they're kind right. of anticipating. 
anticipating that. The mm -hmm. problem is that the spring isn't a good response to it. So it's a response and it's one that's very visible. And so people mm -hmm. might feel comforted by the process, but, um, but it doesn't necessarily work very well. And so, so it's optic optics. Yeah, exactly. I, I think of it as the taking the shoes off in the airport kind of thing. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's, right. yeah. Right, it's what Jim Bangalore wearing his mask on his chin as opposed to over his mouth when he coaches basketball. Yeah, good. Yeah, yeah I mean, like more people are probably yeah. harmed by ticks that, that aren't, uh, doesn't don't seem to be on the state's radar as, as much as these triple E things or okay. West Nile virus, unfortunately. So, um, yeah. So having okay. a smart response, including recognizing that this is going to be an increased threat, I think is, mm -hmm. is you know, it's good to put it in writing. And I, I should mention, and you all might already know this, that there is a um, public comment event May 3rd with an active interaction, but you can also present comments. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna be working on that um, yeah. also, that, which yeah. I think is a good sign that there's both this opportunity for opt out and a public comment period to weigh in mm -hmm. on the mm -hmm. wisdom or lack thereof of this. Yeah, okay, so that's actually cool. a good point. Um, that, by way of quick, by way of background, that was some a piece that uh, Joe Comerford got into the legislation that mandated uh, this task force, which consists of some of the bureaucrats and the, the agencies, but also a, a group, including from nonprofit um, environmental groups like um, Mass Audubon stuff to come up with a 21st century enlightened mosquito management program. So this is the first listening session on that, of course, it comes a little too close for um, decision making on this opt out plan, unless they give everybody, you know, an extension, which doesn't look promising. Okay, so, okay, so you'll uh, give us a, a draft to look at for our next meeting. Is that, is that the plan here? Yeah, but by then you would have to vote, probably vote on it, and it would have to be a public hearing and then be submitted on or before May 15th, which is close to that meeting. So um, we can do it the same, the same time we have our, our next, next select board meeting is what, May, May 12th. So we could have the public meeting the same day and, yeah. mm -hmm. and then uh, decide whether to approve the, yeah. the opt out or not on that day. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Fred, I'm going to, and, and maybe I'm not understanding the process, but I have no problem making a motion right now yeah. that we support That's, opt out of, yeah. of, of the spring. I, I trust these guys. I mean, mm -hmm. my just to make sure that I understand fully. I, I trust these guys. And, and, okay. and, and, and let's and let's be clear that, you know, it's not the first time that the state's made policy um, that's directed more at more populated areas and, as opposed to out mm -hmm. here. So you know, the words right out of my mouth, John. I, I completely. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to vote for, for I this opt out right now. But I is there too. is there a requirement? I hear there's a requirement for a public hearing. Public hearing on this. Yes, there's a public yeah. hearing. So I wouldn't. I would at least you know hold that vote. I mean, you could preliminarily vote, of course, but yeah. Um, I, but the I actual vote on the opt out should probably have some. Uh, public hearing and uh, with the uh, but 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 can't we Fran can't we vote to opt out pending the the public yep. hearing? you can do what you want it's, this is your decision actually yeah I, this is your decision. pending pending a groundswell of support against the the, the opt out I, I'm perfectly comfortable making that vote now okay. if it's going to expedite our process. Yeah. yeah. Ryan, can Ryan, I get that? that? Would that be acceptable for us to do that tonight? I think so. I can show. I mean, the process is sort of prescribed, like I said. And Brian, do you yeah. have that? You want to show it on the screen, or do you want I, me to? Do it? I can. Yeah. In order for the vote to be valid, there needs there needs to be public comment before the vote's taken. So you could take a vote tonight, but I, I would probably ask that you okay. take the vote again. Another one. Mm -hmm. Nice meeting. That, that's fine. Okay. Well, maybe you can take this as a vote of confidence <laughs> in, uh, in or, or taking our temperature, so to speak, and let the mm -hmm. official vote, mm -hmm. vote be after the public hearing mm -hmm. next mm -hmm. time. But let's make all that, all the things you need, let's make that happen, set aside some time in our next agenda for the public hearing part and, mm -hmm. and just let it happen. 
Uh, thank you so much. It's really great to get your support. Appreciate it. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks. Well, if, as soon as we get more information, we'll fill in parts of this uh, application. I hope some more. So. Okay. 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 Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Uh, we leave you to it. Fran, no, Fran, you may want to stay on. You're not sticking another, around. Another <laughs> item that you may be interested in. <laughs> One more thing. Did anybody see me in the parade? Were you in the parade? You on the yeah, bike? Yeah, me and Montserrat, we were on bicycles. I guess I saw you. Yes, I did see you. <laughs> Not up in Westwood. Did you see me? I did. Yeah, okay. you had a sign on the back. Good. Okay, I just just checking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, was it was like it was like a Zoom. Becky, it was almost like a Zoom bomb. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, right. exactly. She was going up the street the wrong way. <laughs> it was really yeah. fun. It was so fun to to see everybody. Anyway, all right, and it was a ama an amazing parade. So, all right, I'm going. Mm -hmm. Okay, night, thank you. No, moving, yep. moving on, uh, I got one item. I think I may have mentioned to Brian. Uh, I'd like to discuss now while Fran is still here. Then we can go to administrator updates. Uh, I've been approached by the veterans group in Waitley slash uh, Deerfield to do some kind of a celebration for Memorial Day at our monument in the center of town. Mm -hmm. uh, they're asking if that would be acceptable to do that. There would be no, uh, no parade, no, no marching, no going to the cemetery. It would just be a brief ceremony at the monument and uh, a few uh, words spoken, I guess, and maybe some some uh, minimal gun, gun salute uh, to do that, and, and, and that would be it. Uh, I told them I would get back to them to mm -hmm. see uh, mm -hmm. if that would be acceptable to the town. Uh, mm -hmm. They feel that they need to do something, I, I guess, with COVID conditions changing, and they feel that there's, there's still an appropriate way to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, they would social distance and, and wear masks, and, then it's a matter of, you know, other people being there, if we could do the same thing or, or limit people. So uh, mm. they want some feedback to know whether that's acceptable. Uh, if it is, I guess we can still work out the details of what would be acceptable for them to be there and uh, tell everybody on our website that we're having a ceremony and this is, this is uh, who can go and how you can attend if we decide we want people there, so. Uh, but but they're pretty firm on, on doing something uh, really on on uh, Memorial Day. Now I don't know exactly what day that's going to be because for the time because I think Hatfield Parade is the same same day. So mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's something I would coordinate with them. Uh, now I don't know, Fran, do you? What is your reaction to that? <laughs> Uh, well, there are gathering limits still in place. So even for outdoors, there's 150 max, which sounds like this wouldn't be it. But if you invited public, it could quickly get to that point. Um, I don't think we really had that many. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Well, it's not, since it's not in conjunction with any um, Waitley Spring Festival or anything. No. You know, it shouldn't be that large if people are planning masks and um, distancing and um, what else? If they could keep a count of who's there, it's a log. That's what we're asking everybody to do. Most every entity wants to reopen now. And they we've asked people to come with a plan. If you guys have a plan that we could just go over quickly, but uh, you know, the basic steps are, you mentioned already, distancing and masking, and nobody should be there who's got any symptoms, obviously, and crowd size should be limited. It, can I interject here just for a second? I heard on the news today that CDC is talking about greatly easing outdoor restrictions. Yeah. That keeping restrictions on sort of tight packed crowds, yeah. but outdoor crowds roughly distanced, they're going to really relax the, the rulings a lot in the next few And they few have days. been. Yeah, they've gradually been um, easing up on all the, the yeah, I heard something's coming down this week to relax yeah. further. 
And the state usually follows suit. Unfortunately, Woods of Health are often the last to know. They make an announcement and they, they don't tell Woods of Health even on our weekly calls with DPH. Oh, be ready. You're going to hear the governor come out with a new standard. And then we hear about it. So I believe you, Fred, that uh, that's probably going to happen if Memorial Day is a ways off. So it could well be that by then, Fred, there's not going to be a problem. Just people keeping their distance and maybe still masking. Yeah. But um, that would that'd be the minimum, I suspect. Okay. Um, but, but so far, the, the events that town has had, even going back to the annual town meeting last year, people paid attention to the social distancing and, and the wearing yeah. masks. So it's not yeah. like we're... We, we've got groups there that want to uh, do their own thing and, and don't pay attention. I, I, I guess we control that. And, and I, I don't think, I don't see that as a problem for this. And I'm not expecting a whole lot of people there. Yeah, Very well, but you look, let's, you know, if, if you look at the parade route on Saturday, you know, not everyone was social distancing <laughs> and there weren't a lot of masks being worn. No. So I think we, and, I, and I'm not saying that I'm for or against, you know, having the public there, but mm. I think we're kidding ourselves if we think that people are going to wear masks and social mm. distance. I, we just are, because they didn't, they didn't this past Saturday. Well, some of those were family groups too. I mean, I was in- well, But not all of them, but not no, all of them. No, 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 right, right. But it was yeah. again, outdoors and they, you know, disease is less, um, well, it's dispersed if there is any um, outdoors with, uh, in the fresh air. So there's, there's significantly lower risk outdoors. Right, but, but we're still requiring, I guess my point is we wanna be consistent because we're still requiring yeah. masks being worn at Hurley Heat Park for adult baseball leagues and we're not allowing adult <clears throat> fans to go to adult baseball games. So I right. think it's somewhat, hypocritical to to allow a gathering like that but not allow somebody's wife to come to a baseball game to watch yeah uh jonathan some of the guidelines from the state are easy to pick apart <laughs> and you wonder sometimes why it right is. well it's again it's optics yeah it is um well you just have to play it as safe as we can if the yeah. state says we're gonna let um Everybody outside, no matter what size gathering in a certain public space, then, uh, you know, we will be hard put to say, well, we could say no. But it doesn't sound like this is going to be a big event no. from Fred's description. A big event. Just, yeah. There may, not be, there may not be many people there for the public any, anyway, so. And they may all be vaccinated by then, which is. Yeah. Hopeful. So. Um, you know, we're kind of balancing that too, like yeah. in, a, in a local level, uh, you know, what's the risk then? Yeah, because we're trying to be consistent, but people are now clamoring for reopening with some um, safety measures in place. And like you said, uh, the ball fields are a little bit different because there's contact there. And, um, you know, the con contact here is, you know, is probably well, already dis distance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but Fran, there's no contact with somebody's wife sitting there watching her husband play baseball. <laughs> By the Ooh, way, I that's, don't know about that's, that. <laughs> that's not that's not allowed. Yeah. But gathering of 50 people at the memorial is. Come on. You know, I I think we've been able to control that in the past, and if things yeah. if the state comes out with with guidelines on how to meet or hold these kind of events, I, I think we should try to follow that. I, I mean, and, and I think even if they didn't, if, if they restricted it, what control do we have to tell people there that you have to wear a mask or you have to social distance? Oh, we have that. Yeah, I know, but who's gonna enforce but. that? <laughs> Enforcing it? Uh, we I have know. police. <laughs> we well, I I got ridiculed for wearing a mask on the on the back of the flatbed on Saturday. Really, well, I heard similar comments too. But <laughs> mm. so, and I was perfectly happy to wear it. So, do I 
can I tell him to propose something for us and we'll look at it at the next meeting? Yeah. So yeah. it would, it's, it's mm -hmm. possible. We'll put it that way, okay? Yeah, yeah, and pass it along with us. It's possible. So we're, we're I, it's either possible or, or not. And I guess if it's not, then we need to tell them soon because they need a plan as well. So, because they have two or three towns they need to go to as well, it's just ours. So, mm. Well, I think with a good plan, uh, with taking into consideration uh, things we just talked about, they should be okay. Do you keep in the numbers? And I know it's the contradiction, Jonathan, with spectators, but adult, at adult games, <laughs> adults, their mom and and your mom, they're allowed at the kids' games. Anybody under twenty-one, I know, but I just know. not at the, not the adults. <laughs> I don't like inconsistency. That's all. Okay, so once we get something from a friend, I'll tell him to share it with you, and then you can comment to us or Brian, which yeah. is. Okay. Mm. That's good. By the way, that was a great parade. I liked your float. Terrif terrific. The only thing, only crit criticism is they should have gone to reverse from Lower Conway to Weber. That corner there was, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. where we're sitting. Hell of a turn, I said. Yeah, we made it though. <laughs> they had to go up with the triaxles up the road a bit, turn, <laughs> find a place to turn around. That's okay. It was fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, going back to- See you later. Uh, okay. Thanks, Fran. Uh, no problem. Brian, under town administrator updates. Yeah. Um, not too many. Jonathan will be happy about that. Um, so there is a vacancy. <laughs> there is a vacancy now at the library. The, the library assistant um, has resigned. So there'll be a posting going out uh, for that part-time position, um, we'll post it on the website. We'll, we'll, we'll place an ad in the paper. Um, so the library will be looking to, to fill that position. Um, and I mean, I think that's really about it. Um, I just want to mention that, that, um, how should I say this, uh, appropriately, um, well, I'll just say we should thank the uh, the Schrader family for the use of their garage. Um, that's where the that's where the float has been housed, um, and I think it's going to continue to be housed there maybe till the Hatfield Parade. So I just wanted to recognize that 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 effort has been made as well, because um, the rent you can't beat the rent. Let me tell you. Yeah. Um, so I just want to thank them for that. Um, and that's pretty much about it. Okay, I have one other item I want to bring up that uh, I think we we discussed briefly at prior meetings is uh, related to the infrastructure program funding that's being talked about in Washington, D.C. Uh, or federal level. Uh, we mentioned doing something to improve the. Uh, water system, the, the, the water department system by uh, extending some of the dead ends and okay, looking for a, a long range one additional water supply. But uh, the other critical item now coming up is related to the loop, extending the, the, the closed in loops is to, uh, this is the water quality in Pine Plains Estates. I received several emails. I think I've shared some with Brian I think our water department has them. Uh, and there, there's things that, that can be done to improve the water quality for at least that, that subdivision. Uh, and, and I think it's, it's appropriate to, to put together a plan of how to address all these, all these uh, concerns of the water department, that, that they're sending the two loops, uh, the water quality of Pine Plains, and of course, part of this involves uh, going under the railroad tracks uh, on uh, Egypt Road. Now, that could take longer than, than the rest of the items, but I think the others could be done fairly soon. Uh, 
and we could wait for the railroad to get approval or, or whatever that they need that could come at a later date. But I think some of the other stuff can be done. You can extend the, the system on Swamp Road and you can extend it on Egypt Road up to the railroad tracks. That can be done fairly soon. And I think we should be in a position to, to, to do that if infrastructure funds come available because they're gonna to wanna to see some improvements quickly, not a, a study or design or a planning for something that's years away. Uh, I think we should be asking the, and, and I think the water department has, has some ideas, some, some concepts, some cost of what is needed to implement these changes or improvements, I should say. I would like to see that further developed so when money comes available, we're ready to go. Because if, if the two loops don't go, at least we need to address the water quality Pine Plains Estates. I received, like I say, several letters from residents. They also have a homeowners association that's taken a position in coordinating with all the 40 plus homes in that, in that subdivision that all have problems with the water. We're, we're using it for, for drinking purposes. So uh, I, I think it's, it's appropriate and, and I'm not asking Brian to go do this. I, I guess we have water department people. Uh, I'm liaison for the department. I, I guess I could, I could uh, help them do this uh, and develop something so we'd be in a better position. Now, the other, the other option uh, I guess is to is to, if we need to hire a consultant or a designer to design a system to, to improve water quality in Pine Plains, well, then we need, would need money to, to do that. I understand the Enterprise Fund does not have money to do that. They would be looking for additional money from the town to do that, that part of it. So uh, if, if that's going to need additional money, well, we'd have to have either at the annual meeting or a special town meeting to get money to do that. Can I interject something in here, Fred? This is a really important discussion to have, but it's not an agenda item. And I'm worried that as a, it might be a, some somewhat of a violation of the spirit, if not the letter of the open meeting law, to have a comprehensive discussion of this without having put it on our agenda. So I, I don't think that this is a bad thing for us to talk about but maybe we should do it when the water department's here and when they've gotten a heads up and about uh, maybe some cost estimates, just something so we're not just kind of going on and on and on about problems that we don't have the information we need to solve. And the people here who would contribute to the solutions. Um, I think uh, you know we're at the end of our agenda, the publicly posted agenda, and, and I would like to adjourn this meeting. I was, so I would move to adjourn the meeting. Seriously, I, I don't have a problem discussing it at, at, at the next meeting. I guess one reason I brought it up here is if, if we wanted to get money in this budget season to do something there, if we needed it. But, but, Fred, but Fred, Joyce is right. You can't, you can't just interject it into a, a discussion like this. It's, it's going to be an agenda item, especially when you're talking about things that impact the fiscal integrity of the town. I, I, I'm sorry, I just you can't do that. You're, I mean, you're right. It's, it's, it's incredibly important, just like Joyce yeah. pointed out. But it's at the end of a meeting, no one's prepared, and, and we should have the water department here. Okay, well, we'll put it on for next. Yeah, next absolutely. Meeting. I can add it to the agenda for the 12th. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. As Brian checks his whiteboard. That's right. There's space. <laughs> okay, we'll put it on for the next meeting then. Okay. Okay. There's All a right. motion that's been made and seconded. Motion to adjourn has been made and seconded. Okay, okay. roll call vote. John? Yep, yep. Joyce? Yes. Fred, yes. Okay. Thanks everybody. Good night. May 12th, okay.